Welcome to the March 2018 Ramble. So basically, the idea behind the Ramble video at the end of each month is um, basically I'll talk in an unedited version or format uh, on stuff that's on my mind. So unlike the other videos, uh, I'd like to keep this unedited or I won't cut out my pauses and uh, things like that. There will be ums as you've already noticed. And it's basically a stream of consciousness. I'm only following a basic outline. There's no set script. So there, the ramble is what it is. It's a ramble, just a loose variety of topics. Um, I thought it'd be interesting to do it. Um, for one, because uh, y most people, or I, I'm not uh, used to having to deal with stream of consciousness um, as a writer or as somebody who communicates with people you're always uh, supposed to immediately say what's on your mind and formulate an argument there's an assumption you want to get to this point you want to argue this stand then you marshal your arguments you give facts uh, you advance your case which is the exact opposite of the ramble and you'll notice I'm not particularly practiced at this because you want usually you want to keep things short and sweet but with the ramble basically you can go anywhere I can do anything and as I mentioned I'm not used to doing it so I thought it'd be good to do it at the end of each month and uh, see how it goes incidentally if you're wondering the, about the video that you're watching uh, that's my minor it's been going on for it's been mining for about a year composed mainly of secondhand parts um, I don't know if anybody watching is into crypto mining but currently this uh, guy is mining ethereum um, and that's a whole different topic I can get into it some other time on you know can you really make money mining cryptocurrencies and can you really make money trading cryptocurrencies? Are they all a scam and things like that? Um, actually, the ramble will also feature some topics which I intend to do in the future. I have found that uh, talking things through in my head or talking things out loud does help clarify some points. So I think the ramble video will also help uh, me generate new ideas as well as thoughts or as well as figure out some of the things I'd like to say about some of the topics um, that I've already listed down. So just, we're already here at the three minute mark and I've said absolutely nothing. Um, first of all, I just wanna say that uh, if you do choose, or sort of as an incentive for everyone, if you choose to uh, support me on Patreon, you do get a thank you in this video as well as inclusion in the credits. And for our first 1,000 YouTube subscribers, I will say thank you to you in each Ramble video. And once we hit 1,000, uh, honestly, I'll have to stop doing that. But once we hit 1,000, the first 1,000 subscribers will be forever enshrined at the end credits of each Ramble video. So of course, we'll have to see. Um, I'm not used to uh, saying names of particular cultures out loud. I mean, I might get the pronunciation wrong and things like that and of course there are always these cheeky guys on the internet who will want me to say a bad word or they'll put uh, <laughs> they'll put a swear word in their name or things like that can't and I feel like I'm 12 years old for just having said bad word but anyway so of course you know I won't uh, the really egregious names um, I will have to sort of censor around a little bit but you know we'll, we'll get to that point um, so I do hope you guys subscribe you can hear me say I'll say thank you to you in the ramble video and you will end up in the end credits and if you really do have some money to uh, toss around uh, a dollar or two please do support me on patreon so PSA over um, the first topic actually I thought of rambling on about was uh, Recently on my Facebook page, there was a trending post made by a college student, so a freshman college student, and basically he was calling out his high school bully. He was 
apparently the bully still continued to um, give him a hard time online even after they graduated and the victim had had enough and basically called out the bully via his facebook post um so the the victim you know posted the post on his the victim's wall and um it sort of went viral a lot of people shared with it and well it to my mind it brought up a lot of interesting things i mean obviously we're all familiar with cyberbullying and how loose people are online loose in the sense that they feel even things they wouldn't necessarily say offline they lose all compunction they lose all filters and say it online not to say that in this particular uh, bully victim relationship it appears that at least some of the bullying was offline um, and that got cur carried into the online space so an interesting book I read about that um, was So You've Been Publicly Shamed. I've forgotten the author, but basically he interviewed a lot of um, famous cases of people who got shamed online. Um, there was that lady who tweeted something about, uh, it was kind of racist, she was going to Africa and she hoped that um, she did, wouldn't get AIDS or something like that. Um, there's that story. There was also the story of a guy who was attending a tech conference and he motioned to his seatmate and they started talking about dongles and you know the sort of sexual imagery regarding dongles and he made a poor joke and but a woman who was near him felt that not only was the joke in poor taste but that she was personally offended as well so you know there's there's a uh, we don't lack for examples of people who have been bullied online um, this this particular Facebook post which caught my attention um, it's really kind of vanilla I mean there's nothing distinguishing about it uh, of course if you're one of the parties you do feel bad but well, if you're the victim you feel bad I would imagine the bully is either trying to get attention or uh, is acting out some other things on his own but you notice we always do kind of explain bullying away like that that the bully is in actuality an insecure person and he's trying to work out some things but you know what if it, that's not the case what if a bully just likes the power trip what if he's really a bad guy a bad person his parents didn't mistreat him you know he had a dog at home i mean you know some people are just really poor examples of the human race and they like making the lives of other humans miserable so i guess uh, in my mind while we do have to be conscious that maybe a majority of bullies are acting out um, poor family background you know hormones uh, poor impulse control i think is what some of the psychologists say um perhaps some of them just really have all those don't sorry don't have all of that baggage and just uh want just consciously choose to act in a jerk kind of way because they are jerks <laughs> um but to go back to the facebook post i was also kind of curious from the victim's point of view what the his rationale was behind sharing behind uh, sharing his story about being bullied and about publicly calling the bully out i mean because there's a nice or it's, it's sorry nice is the wrong word there's an interesting role reversal where can you argue that the bullied, that is the victim, ha actually becomes the bully because he basically incites a mob against his former bully? But then you would argue that even if that's the case, doesn't the bully deserve it? So, or was the victim just not thinking through? He was just finally fed up with everything and decided to let it all out? Um, again, uh, you wonder if that was the best move but again you also don't want to blame the victim so it's a it's a vast thicket of you know it's a vast thicket of looking at it from different points of view and well you know uh in my school days there was some bullying um i guess you know i was bullied um 
but not to an extreme extent and I guess as well that the shoe was on the other foot sometimes and that I was the bully uh, although probably that was uh, much less in comparison to the times that I was bullied but uh, I mean that's sort of normal I guess growing up and you do feel well I feel bad for people who are at the extreme end of the spectrum I mean like they were bullied constantly and that's affected them even after even after they've left school and even after they've matured and they have jobs I do know somebody who I don't remember to the extent how much he was bullied but he really took it to heart and that really warped his life and uh, he looks back on that time of his life as extremely painful and those decisions uh, that experience has informed how he lives now um, you can see he sort of carries a martyr complex he always feels persecuted so you do feel bad or I feel bad for those people where they were bullied to such an extent that they can't let it go that it becomes part of their identity if not their foundational belief of their identity um, I think I can honestly say I wasn't bullied to, to that extent thank God um, I do know some I also know somebody else who thinks that it's if you're bullied uh, you become more interesting or you become a stronger person after that and you know that sort of that's carried with you past you know into adulthood and you know a lot of famous people who are very successful later on in life uh, were bullied as kids uh, Elon Musk comes to mind um, I can't remember but basically you know if you're smart and brainy you generally probably would have been bullied at some point or another um, does that make you a bet does that lay the foundation to be stronger as an adult or as an adolescent um, I wouldn't know I'm not uh, qualified to say so I'm not a psychologist or, or a psychiatrist but um, I guess I'll just end on the note that uh, as someone who was bullied in the past but again not to that extent that uh, I consciously feel that it, it, in, it impacted my life forever I do feel bad for those who were victimized to that extent and if you're a parent it must feel terrible to know that your child is going through that and there's not a lot really that a parent can do I would think in that situation so that's it for the bullying I guess I don't know just randomly hashing through my thoughts um, the next topic I have and you'll notice again this is really a ramble because ordinarily I would take pains to have a nice transition between topics sort of at least try to connect all of them but uh, here it's just like oh topic job topic job so um, the second point I was uh, sort of thinking of raising was uh, I read an interesting Atlantic article regarding the origins of the US Supreme Court case um, ruling that uh, corporations are people or basically that juridical persons have the same or can have access to the same rights as natural persons um, if you're not uh, really interested in the law and you know you just tuned out after US Supreme Court and decision and whatnot uh, I totally get you but um, uh, I do have some background in this matter and I was just generally it was a really interesting article to read and also because corporations form a large part of our society now yes they're big corporations like Amazon you know and they Apple has such a large cash reserve but it's really when these corporations begin to act like people like for instance can a corporation say that I don't want to pay for the abortion of my employee which may be ordinarily covered under health insurance because that would violate my religious beliefs so then you know can a corporation really have religious beliefs um, on one hand basically a corporation is just a collection of people it's a group of people and 
we do recognize that a group of people that is, you know, a nation, a state, can have religious beliefs. Um, and that's kind of interesting now that I say that. I'm, I, f I sound like kind of a doofus because it sounds like I'm advocating for a return to the fusion of church and state where the state has a monopoly on religion and, and that's not it at all. Um, uh, sort of what I'm saying is that a nation or a group of people can have a shared belief in certain things. I mean, some countries are traditionally Protestant, for instance. Some countries are traditionally uh, Islamic, and these religious beliefs inspire or uh, naturally influence the civil laws that they pass. Even the United States, which is which has is one of the leading forerunners in deciding uh, how much religion can be permitted in the public space. Even the U.S. is a, a deeply religious nation. And that's actually quite surprising since, uh, again, because there's, there are those torrent of U.S. Supreme Court cases um, very strictly defining what, what uh, portion or what religious expression can be tolerated in public. Um, so anyway, yeah, the U.S. SC case um, where the U.S. Supreme Court first enunciated that corporations can be treated like people. Actually, the it was so interesting because it's actually a really old case, but um, basically the USSC never arrived at that decision or never arrived or never decided a case based on that assumption or on that reasoning that a corporation is a natural person. Um, that ruling only came to be because one of the justices basically operated uh, fraudulently or basically he hoodwinked people into thinking that the USSC um, had that kind of decision even though there never was such a decision. So anyway, I'll just let you read the Atlantic article. Um, it's quite interesting and it's quite short and uh, unlike certain other legal writings, there's actually, it's quite interesting because the, there's a wide cast of characters. Um, most of them scallywags. <laughs> most of them people who you kind of scratch your head and think, you know, this was a justice of the Supreme Court or this was a respected lawyer. And Again, it, it brings to mind for me like how we like to bemoan the sorry state of public affairs, the sorry state of governance, and things like that. And there's always a tendency to harken back to a golden time where everything was better, when leaders were decent, when the subway worked, when the roads were not filled with potholes. And there's always an urge to valorize the past even though most usually when you look back at the past, it was pretty sucky as well. Um, and for me, that's always a reason to appreciate the present, even though it can suck sometimes. I mean, um, you know, if you're on the internet, you probably run across um, how much the world can suck right now, both on a geopolitical international level and even on the local level regardless of where you live right now i'm sure you can always find people who you think why is that guy calling the shots or you know you feel that you were wrongly aggrieved and i guess it's important to remember that we could be i mean it's important to remember that even though this you feel like you're in a tough time and that this is the worst time to be alive and you look at, back at the past and think I wish I could have been born in the 50s or whatever time, whatever era um, actually we have it pretty good now um, there's an ongoing debate now where our current time is the is you know the year or it's that portion in history where we have the least amount of poor people at least as percentage of the population uh, we have the most number of educated people. We have uh, violence is going down and things like that. Um, a good advocate for this position would be Stephen, I think Stephen, sorry, Pinker. Uh, and he has a book, I think 
two or three years old and it's entitled The Better Angels of Our Nature where he does argue that yes, violence is down, um, education is up, basic poverty is down. I ran across some articles just recently online arguing the opposite position uh, but as I haven't read them, I won't comment on them yet. But Pinker's position is an interesting one, especially for us or, you know, for the ordinary citizen who thinks that, uh, who can't help but think that these are really dark end times filled with woe and, you know, dark um, foreshadowings and, you know, something terrible is just around the corner. Um, it's also good to look dispassionately at now and see that you know a lot of it is good the fact that you're listening to a random stranger on the internet uh, is evidence of that fact that we've somehow come up with a global interconnected network that can reach out to anybody at any time basically and of course there are some bad things about that like the cyberbullying earlier but there are also an incomparable number of good things like you can book your hotels online, you can uh, reserve uh, movie tickets online. I mean, I mean, these are just very facile things about the internet, but it really goes to show that, um, and it's just one technology that's present at the moment, but again, um, it's, uh, it's uh, kind of funny to think that if you think, it, you have to be happy by thinking outside the box, because if you, listen to current dogma about the world is you know the world is terrible people are terrible um you might get sucked into that viewpoint but uh there are alternate viewpoints that say that uh for a large majority of people this is really the best time to be alive you go to your restaurant you can order spanish food you go to your grocery and you can get uh basically fruits and vegetables all year round. The mere fact that you can go to a grocery instead of having to go to uh, I mean, the mere fact that you do have a grocery that's always perpetually stocked is something that a very small minority of people in throughout human history has been able to experience, have been able to experience. So again, of course there are a lot of bad things going on but I guess I try not to let I try to make sure that that doesn't detract from how I'm experiencing the good things uh, that we have right now. And so honestly, I've droned on for 22 minutes and I had four basic topics, um, but uh, I don't know, 22 or so, 23 minutes seems a bit long. So maybe I'll just end the ramble here. and. Again, if you are subscribed or if you do, please do subscribe and you would get a thank you somewhere around here or ba basically I would intersperse the thank yous throughout the video. And once we hit 1,000 subscribers, whenever that may happen, um, all you lucky 1,000, first 1,000 will go on the credit page um, at the end of each Rumble video. So hopefully I, I want to be doing this for a while. Um, I find it relaxing from my usual work. Um, but again, you know, I don't know. Let's see how it goes. And if you think I suck or I should stop doing this, please do say so in the comments, but in a nice way. After all, it's still a nice world, even though a lot of people use the internet to prove the opposite. All right. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for listening.